Hello everyone and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. I've decided to call the series Hard Times because of course we are in the hard difficulty mode. And uh, here you see the rocket that we will launch first. I am doing post commentary of course. This rocket is of course meant to send some science juniors into flybys around the moon and Minmus. We've got the four solid rocket boosters at the bottom, LVT-45 in the center, and uh, so forth. You can see the little orange rockets in the second stage, the Rocket Max 2477. So, and so we're going to uh, be fulfilling the contracts of getting some science from orbit around the Moon and Minmus, while of course actually getting the science back. So here it is out on the launch pad. I tried to time warp to daylight here, and you can see that. But I noticed that my electric charge was diminishing, and of course in nighttime uh, the solar panels don't really work. I do, I have unlocked the solar panels in the tech tree, but haven't really, uh, well, they, they don't really work in this case. So had to stop time warping and uh, quit the idea of getting into daylight and just launch. I've staged it so that two of the sonic rocket boosters fire first and then the other two fire. And one thing you'll notice is that I'm having difficulty controlling the vehicle because, of course, the only uh, control that I have is from the pod's own torque, and that's not quite enough. And you'll see that in a future launch I'm going to come up with a way of fixing that, but right now the, the rocket isn't quite going where I want it to. I'm happy to dump those two solid rocket boosters because now I have a little bit more control. Each booster stage lasts for about 30 seconds, so the two booster stages put together last for about a minute. And so that's what we're looking at here. We'll be just right at the point where you should normally start your gravity turn. But uh, the solid rocket boosters have sort of forced my hand here, so starting a little bit early. But that's alright because they've also pushed us to a higher velocity than normal. I don't know what that was about. Uh, that weird explosion when separating the solid rocket boosters. Does anybody else get that? I mean, of course, they should have separated just normally like the other two. There was no particular reason why they would have had any problems. But I guess uh, this new version of uh, KSB is very focused on explosions. Very explosion happy. So I guess the game decided to throw that one in just as a bonus. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, making orbit here, of course. Uh, no, no big fuss about that. The stage goes out, and now we are on the second stage with the two little orange Rockamax 2477s. And uh, coasting along, and this is Transmooner Injection. I've always liked these Rockamax 2477s, but since we started uh, having funds in point two four, they've become even better because they're cheap. They're much cheaper than any equivalent ones. In fact, they're cheaper than the LV-1s, the little uh, 4 kilonewton thrusters. So, it's sort of like, why wouldn't you use them if you want to save money? And of course, I wanted to save money on this one. So, uh, here I am trying to fine-tune the approach. And you can see, uh, getting under 50 kilometers there. Quite acceptable. Of course, my goal is to fly by the moon, uh, do the high and near lunar space science and you can see me approaching the high region here and then immediately transfer to Minmus to save uh, save fuel I do not want to get into orbit around the moon so here we get the high over the moon science no problems there I plot to correct my inclination with respect to Minmus, which it is easier to do here. You get a little bit of a boost from from the moon's gravity. So this is the inclination change burn. Probably gonna have to do a little bit more of this later on as well, but this helps. I think I get a good angle to look at how this helps afterwards. The moon's gravity is making it easier to make this adjustment and if we zoom out there we go you can see that my trajectory is now lined up with the that of Minmus okay so uh, doing the near to the moon science here and a science junior and there we have it no problem we'll need to bring those back though otherwise it's not going to be worth much 
and that's the trick I need to make sure that we save enough fuel this is an adjustment burn to bring us right now the moon is fleeing us into interplanetary space so I needed to retro burn just a little in order to make sure that we re remain in Kribben orbit like that and then after I do that I can plot for the intercept to Minmus. Turns out it didn't require much of an inclination thing though we did have to go around Kerbin once so we actually had to do a full orbit before uh, managing anything else. Nice little scene with uh, Kerbin and the moon here and here is an adjustment burn that uh, we need to do in order to hit Minmus. So far this was a pretty straightforward mission, but if you take a very good look at the craft you might notice one little flaw, one little mistake I made. Uh, I'm not saying that it's going to uh, condemn this mission to oblivion, but still, it's going to give me a little bit of worry at one point. Okay, so here we are in the vicinity of Minmus, and so it is time, if I can get my camera angle right, to uh, do the Science Junior High over Minmus. And there we have it. Not the easiest science I've ever collected, but still fairly easy. And we got close to Minmus. Was We weren't able to do that from far out. It's very hard to get really close to Minmus from far out because it's such a small target anyway. Okay, so we get that. And now I have to figure out how to get back. It turns out that I needed to get into orbit around Minmus because it just wasn't... Uh, I wouldn't have been in the right trajectory to simply go straight back to Kerbin. So I made orbit and then I burned out and that was the most efficient way of doing it and you can see getting the trajectory right. So far in this series I haven't used error breaking calculator so I'm just sort of winging it and that's gonna turn out to be a bad thing in this particular episode but you know uh, Got to get a feel for error breaking without uh, constantly going to a website. So here we go, approaching Kerbin. I think from those comments you get a small hint of the fact that we're not going to be hitting the KSC right on this time. And in fact we are a little bit too deep into the atmosphere. You can see the pretty serious flame effects here. And if we uh, jump out to the map view at some point. Map view? There we go. We see that we are ways away from the little flag I planted on at the KSC to mark it out. Parachutes deploy and this is where I figure out that I made a mistake. You see what I did was I arranged the parachutes on the vessel around the center of mass with the fuel in. Don't do that. That is a rookie mistake. Of course, you should remove the fuel in the VAB to see how uh, how it's balanced, and then put the parachutes. If if you're trying to land horizontally, of course, which is what I was trying to do. If you're trying to land vertically, it doesn't really matter. But uh, if you're trying to land horizontally, then you should remove the fuel from the from the fuel tanks and then put the parachutes based on the center mass. So I landed with the probe part down, which is the least pleasant way of doing it, but it managed to be safe because I quickly clicked the recover vessel button. Anyway, much science was retrieved. You can see in the upper right hand corner blinking is the fact that I did my, I fulfilled the contracts. So that's good, got plenty of funds for that. And not so much funds for actually recovering the vessel though because I was, it was on the opposite side. So I picked up some more contracts. We will be trying to explore Eve and explore Ike, so pick those up. Exploring Eve might be a little bit of a trick, but uh, we'll take it. I took some time looking at the others, but there was nothing else I wanted from that. So uh, continuing on, getting some more technology here. This is critical, of course, because it shapes all the future missions and therefore all the future episodes, which way I go and and of course uh, how much money I spend on everything, especially now that we have to pay to unlock parts. I of course ex uh, decided to get the thermometer, which is a critical science part that will be very useful. Get a little bit more science from that. I hate the barometer, so I decide not to quite jump on that as quickly. I do like struts though, 
So, uh, after a very brief amount of pondering... Come on. You know you want the struts. Okay, there we go. And get the struts. Got it. Launch clamps, probably not quite as necessary, but still. I don't think I get any of the other parts. And when I think of struts, I also think of fuel lines, for some reason. And so I decided to unlock that, get the fuel lines, and also get that little uh, Rocket Max engine, the 48.7S. And that's going to be real helpful in the subsequent missions in this episode, because it's got the high ISP 350 in vacuum, and I really needed that, especially with its low mass. I see that I've unlocked the rest of that tier, so I'd go ahead and unlock that one. Not really interested in the parts right now, though. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is actually send a mission over to Duna. I noticed that we had Explore Ike. I think we've already picked up Explore Duna, though I, I forget. I might have to check that out. So, I time warp to the home and transfer point, which is roughly 45 degrees. And so we have it there. And then I build a unmanned Duna slash Ike exploration vehicle. It'll depend. I'll double check the contracts to see whether I should uh, have the Duna one. If uh, it turns out we have both Explore Duna and Explore Ike, then I'll send uh, another one of these over. But uh, this is really only for either Duna or Ike. Anyway, uh, you can see the Science Junior thermometer, two goo containers, and the parachutes indicate that we intend to try and bring this back. Plenty of solar panelry. And otherwise, the same launcher that we used for the Moon and Minmus mission, except I decide to move the LVT-45 down. And you'll see what I do with that in a sec. Obviously, I'm not going to uh, light it at full thrust immediately, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it at partial thrust. Uh, about a 1 -sixth thrust there. And so, with that 1 -sixth thrust, I can use its gimbling in order to keep this whole thing steady. So that's the plan for uh, making sure that this isn't uh, quite as wiggly as it was before. Somebody noted that the nose cones actually help with stability, and perhaps the fact that I didn't put nose cones on the tops of those boosters might have contributed to some of the issues that we've been having, though I'm not sure. It is a blunt object facing the the air and I usually try to avoid that but when it comes to boosters at relatively low speed and low altitude I'm not that picky and it's not uh, though I, I guess it's pretty quick at this point I'd still consider it low speed as long as it's below the speed of sound going good though here comes the separation of the second booster pair. And yeah, a weird explosion for no rhyme or reason. They call this update of KSP economic boom, and they seem intent on throwing in explosions wherever wherever they can. I don't know what the heck is up with that, but... I don't like things exploding because they don't usually do that unless things go wrong in my, in my stuff. So this sort of random explosion thing sort of gives me a minor heart attack, making me think that I've uh, done something horribly wrong, but I, I guess that's not going to be a very reliable indicator in this in this uh, version of KSP. Okay, I do the thermometer reading in the upper atmosphere, as you can see, as we're coasting up to apoapsis to make the burn for orbit. And here is the orbital burn. That's it for the LV-45 stage, and in the second stage I've replaced the uh, Rockmax uh, 2477s with the 48.7s that we just unlocked because it's got the better ISP. It's got uh, lower mass as well, uh, the slightly lower thrust. It's got uh, 10 kilonewtons less uh, thrust than two of its orange brethren, but it has uh, much less mass. so. It's all good, and so it makes the transfer over to Duna. And we will not be following this mission out because we want to do other things in the time that it takes for it to get to Duna. So I make final adjustments here, and uh, with that we will just uh, leave this mission 
once I get it close enough to Duna and plot the mid-course adjustment. You can see me trying to tweak it here and I think I get it under uh, 10,000 kilometers or close to 10,000 kilometers and then finally with the mid-course adjustment that I plot I get it to uh, well within well close to its atmosphere. So out it goes. I don't actually follow it out of uh, current sphere of influence and in retrospect that was a mistake because its course decided to change on me because I didn't uh, pay attention to it. You know how that is. But I wanted to do one more thing before I concluded this episode and actually I ended up doing two more things as you'll soon see. So I decided to just leave this little guy be and then turn to the contract screen. Checking out contracts, I noticed this little thing. Testing anything landed on Kerbin is, an, is a breeze. So I just picked it up. I decided to quickly do it. It's one of these uh, stages that I never use. Um, and I empty of it a fuel. Take it out to the launch pad. It's got no fuel. I light it. And that's that contract filled. So uh, that, that's one thing. Now on to the thing that I actually wanted to do. After I check out the... Uh, that everything is kosher there. Okay, here we go. Now, they gave me the contracts to plant a flag on the moon and Minmus after I had visited Minmus. And so this this vessel is going to take us to both the moon and Minmus. That's the plan. And really, there's only one guy that could do such a daring mission, and that is, of course, Jeb Kerman. I'm not going to try and keep Jeb out of the capsules these times. So here we go. Out to both the moon and Minmus. It is... We are going to be dumping the liquid boosters at high cost, but but uh, it'll be worth it. These two contracts are very lucrative, so I didn't mind too much about uh, dumping the all of these engines and fuel tanks. So off they go. Off they go. There we go. And we continue. So again, the focus on this one is contract fulfillment rather than uh, particularly getting as much science as possible. We'll take the surface sample and EVA reports, of course, from the surface, but after I get into orbit here and transfer, it's just a matter of getting the flags planted to fulfill the contracts. We need that money to pursue greater things. Okay, that's the LVT-45 out, and now this is the the transit stage. That is an LV-909 that is actually bringing us to the moon. This is transmunar injection complete. And of course, this is a very different mission than the Science Junior mission we saw at the beginning of this episode because we can't just fly by. We need to make orbit, we need to land on the moon, we need to take off again, and all that. So uh, this transit stage actually did a little bit more than I expected it to, but uh, that was good. It not only got us into orbit around the moon, which I needed it to, but it uh, it supplied some of the descent burn as well. A lot of the descent burn. It was always going to do the initial part of the descent burn, but uh, it did more than I expected it to. Anyway, here's us making orbit. Jeb decided to aim for that crater there, and so a mild inclination burn. Well, it's a little bit uh, closer to the heart of it. And there's that inclination burn complete. It was combined with the initial descent burn, of course. Still on the transit stage, thankfully. And uh, here we go, main descent burn. Gotta make sure we keep as much fuel as possible in order to be able to do the Minmus part of this. So I can't be doing what I normally do on landings, which is like constantly keep the engine on and uh, go down really slowly. I of course do need to ditch the, the transit stage, and so uh, here I basically cut out all my velocity with it and then let it go. So it did quite a lot. It basically did everything except for the final descent here. 
trying my best not to use much. Oh. Yeah, uh, explosion effects. Uh, empty fuel tank, mind you. Very excessive, and boy did it hop. And there it goes again. And it hops again. And uh, just in case you didn't get that sound effect, there it is. Yeah, not the best effects for this sort of thing. I'm not a big fan of the new effects. Also, weird wood-like texture here. I don't know if the moon actually has parts that look like this, but there's a seam there. The the wood-like texture, I don't know. That, that got me confused. But anyway, we sat down, and Jeb was in a hurry to uh, pop out and s take a look around. We haven't actually uh, done a lunar landing. We did a orbital science around the moon last time, and then did a Minmus landing, but Chip gets to finally plant his flag on the moon here. So out he goes, and I was, after uh, taking the surface sample and EVA report, preoccupied by the texture on the ground. And so you'll see that once I plant the flag, hopefully get the correct crater name this time, Maybe. Yeah, okay. And the date. I, I, I have Jeb wondering about this texture as well. Indeed. Okay, now back into the capsule. Check that our contract is complete. You know what we need? We need a jetpack obstacle course on the moon in Minmus. Somebody needs to build something like that. Something where uh, you can practice using your jetpack without bumping into things. You know, they'll have a very, very complicated course and you try and get through that course very quickly. I did remember the crew report as you can see. So uh, yeah, that's just a random idea. Obstacle course for Kerbal jetpacking or EVA packing if you will on the moon in Minmus would be very interesting to watch little corridors using the the panels and everything. So up we go. Gear up and making orbit around the moon. To keep it efficient I try and uh, stay close to the prograde vector and that's generally a good idea. And then once I do make orbit I need to make sure I have enough fuel. So I go to the map view, once I get rid of the maneuver node, and I check what my mass is so that I can do the calculation. I forget what the actual result of the calculation was, except that I did have enough and I decided to make the transfer to Minmus. I don't know the exact number for how much delta V I had left though. Okay, so I uh, made the plot. Did not have to go around Kerbin in entire orbit this time. I'm sure Jeb was glad of that. And this is the Moon to Minmus transfer. Nice view of the moon, the sun, and everything. Very scenic. Sometimes I can't resist putting in a scene like this simply because it is so beautiful, but uh, even though it might be a little bit boring to some, I just like the look of it. So, I toss these in every now and again. As we do the mid-course plane change, this is also a pretty nifty one with the moon beginning to eclipse Kerbin. It's not rare, I know. I mean, you could uh, send your spacecraft to exactly where you need it to be to see this particular site. But, you know, as it is happening in the middle of a mission, it's always interesting. So here we go, uh, on our path to Minmus. We are on a high pass, it turns out that we are in a polar orbit. And I decided instead of hitting the flats I want to hit uh, either Midlands or Highlands this time. And so not only do I make orbit, but I also change my inclination if you will. Uh, inclination is because we are going in this direction in order to hit a patch that I like. It seems relatively smooth, even though it's not one of the flats. Of course, there's plenty to Minmus that is not smooth, so I'll have to pick your target pretty well. 
this do orbital burn. Jeb delighted with the idea that he's going to be able to plant a flag on both the moon and Minmus in one mission. And perhaps once we unlock the Nerva, he'll be able to plant a flag on more than one planet on the same mission. I, I, it's been a long time since I've unlocked the Nerva, and I've been thinking that maybe once we get there, I'll switch back to, to a regular live commentary because that's that's the thing that I haven't done much in these stock series for a while. I haven't used the Nerva at all. So uh, maybe that'll be the key point, or maybe the key point when I switch from post commentary to live commentary will be my first, first failure. Uh, after I have my first first disaster, perhaps I'll switch back to live commentary because obviously at that point the difficulty level would have gotten to the to the point where maybe my live reactions might be interesting. But here, landing on Minmus, uh, no big sweat. I even time warp during descent in order to see where my radar altimeter might start uh, going down. There it is. So. Then I get a read on how far above the surface we are, and so uh, can make a relatively good precision landing without wasting fuel. Okay, and so nice music as we try and sit down. Very, uh, very appropriate music, oddly enough. So sometimes it seems like the tracks just randomly pop up, but. This is a good one for a touchdown. And there we go. Okay, so uh, let's get the crew report. But of course, we already have a crew report from the moon. But in this case, I, uh, I decide that uh, some crew report spam is okay. So I take the data, get back in the capsule, and then do the crew report. Because if we're going to have... Uh, flag planting on both the moon and Minmus. We should get crew reports from both as well. Okay, so with that, I I see what science I can do from still on the capsule. It's a little bit weird, but anyway, I just uh, take the science I can get. But the main thing is to plant the flag. Of course, that's the mission. That is our contract. And so here comes the planting of the flag. still with the grandiose music okay there we go turned out to be lowlands instead of midlands or highlands seemed pretty high to me but uh, whatever and I was still wondering whether he would have enough fuel to get back home we will see I hadn't checked the Delta V situation yet after landing of course uh, you can't really figure out how much you've used up on landing unless you make the full calculation but decided to just go with it uh, either he was gonna get home or he wasn't come on this is why I say we need a EVA pack obstacle course or something some little uh, tunnel where they have to practice EVAing because I need to practice I remember to get the temperature scan that's rare Okay, so uh, everything checks out. Hopefully we got the contract fulfilled. Jeb is thrilled with this. He's confident he's going to get home. And off we go. It doesn't take too long to get a decent apoapsis on Minmus. And so pretty quickly after I start burning, I decide to plot for orbit. And so this is actually the orbital burn here. Now those are slopes I would not want to try and land on, even on Minmus, where if you fall off it probably won't hurt you too much. And it looks like we need a little inclination adjustment. I'm still trying to hit the KSC, uh, though I'm not uh, using all the tools available in terms of the air braking calculator, of course. And in this case again, I'm going to end up getting my periapsis a little bit too low, as it turns out. Spoiler alert! <laughs> okay, well, uh, here is our transfer to Kerbin. I took the opportunity during this to marvel at how serious those slopes are. Really caught my eye. 
And out we go. Let's see if we can get a nice approach to Kerbin. Very scenic, yes. Oh, quick. Watch out for the time warp. All right, uh, in we go. And yeah, yeah, a little bit uh, too low on the periapsis. I valiantly attempt to use the remaining fuel to uh, boost uh, the apoapsis up. You can see me spin around there, point uh, prograde. Uh, come on, uh, up pitch please. There we go. And uh, how about full power maybe in desperation? Come on, there we go. But it's to no avail really. Uh, the atmosphere is far more powerful than my remaining fuel. And so eventually we get sucked in, uh, once again, basically on the opposite side of the planet from the KSC. Uh, maybe I should go back to using your braking calculator. I'm clearly not very good at this. Okay, so uh, otherwise we're pretty good. We're not trying to land horizontally this time. The parachute deployment is fine. I put down the landing gear to soften the landing if necessary, but it turns out that we, uh, once we see the full deployment of the parachutes right there, we're at a very low, low vertical velocity and any impact should be fine. So, splash down. And recover vessel. Come on, stop bobbing. Okay, so much science accumulated, but the main thing was the funds, and you can see that we are now up to 285,000 funds. Uh, no thanks to uh, the recovery of our, well, a little bit of funds thanks to recovery of our parts. It's not that bad. It's uh, about 50% of the total value. Probably should be less than that, really. I'll concede that. And, of course, uh, no additional reputation for bringing Jeb back, because I guess that's just a given. You must get Jeb back. I noticed that time warping through all this mission stuff has led my Duna mission to go a little bit further out, but I'll just have to correct the mid-course burn some other time in the next episode. So I'll take care of that in the next episode. And now I look at the contract screen. And of course, the science data from Space Around Kerbin is given. Probably when we unlock Graviolis, that'll be a thing. And so I'll just uh, do it at that point. Otherwise, the contracts don't look great. Though, uh, I think I ended up getting the Ion Engine test in flight and the Cypertron in flight. Because those seem to be reasonably doable. So I just picked those up. I hope I don't forget to actually do them, though I've got like a hundred days. Of course, with the Duna mission distracting me, it'd be very easy to just go right past that. So, next episode I have to make a point to remember those. And then now unlocking technologies, which of course shape the future episodes of this series. And I concede that I need to unlock the barometer. And of course the ladders. The ladders are helpful because I don't have to constantly EVA pack up to the pod. But uh, with this unlocking technologies, I'll call an episode here. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.